So I had a friend a while back ask me what they needed in order to polish their vehicle. Now this is their first time polishing paint. Uh, they're into detailing, but they just want to get, you know, get a kind of uh, enter the world of polishing. So in this video, I want to talk to you about, you know, for the beginner that's literally just getting started with polishing paint or has maybe dabbled in it a little bit or to the person that possibly is thinking about maybe, hey, I want to offer detailing services and I want to do, I want to polish paint. There'll be an introductory uh, video in terms of the tools and, uh, and products that you'll need to get started with that. So I'm not going to start from like, hey, this is the wash process. You need these buckets and brushes, but just primarily on the polishers, pads, uh, polishes and towels that you need, how many you need, how many you go through and such. Uh, in order to start with your personal vehicle. Now I'll be referencing a lot of things, so just check the description box down below for those links, the tools and products, uh, just because that's what I use, but there's, whatever I mentioned here, there's gonna be dozens of other companies that offer just as good at the same, cheaper, a bit more expensive, so don't get too crazy in terms of what specifically I'm using. If you wanna try something else out that you see that you like, by all means, you can totally do that. This, just this, It's more important to follow like, the general concept or principles that I'm trying to share. Not exactly like I use this polisher for the first time polishing. My voice is cracked. Let's get into the video. So this is my bag of polishers. Sorry, you can't really tell because the lighting is terrible here, but I'll just bring out each one. So this is the Grits Garage six inch polisher. They just came out with a, GG, uh, a G9 now. Uh, I don't know much about it, but I'll link it down below if you want to look at it because it's the same price range as this one, 150. The other one is 160, I believe. But you can check that out as it is improved, more power, and just overall better performance. Here I have the G15, the Boss G15 from Grids Garage as well. It has a 15 um, millimeter throw. And then I have the, um, the Adams Polishes. Uh, the Adams Polishes Swirl Killer, which is a three inch polisher for smaller areas. Uh, and so with starting off, like you don't need to go and get a bunch uh, or think about getting a bunch of polishers because you can even go down to one inch pneumatics and such. You don't need to go overboard when you're just getting started. What I'll recommend is somewhere in this range. This is $150. Try looking for one that's already used online or on Craigslist. But if you want, so go ahead and check out um, their newer version, their G9, which is, much, I think I, have, I haven't really looked at it much, but I'll link it down below. Uh, it's Im improved in, in, in many ways uh, for the same price range. Now, if you want to even, if you don't want to spend that much money, you can go to Harbor Freight and get it for like 70 bucks, just the machine, not the pads, just the machine. And if you want, if you don't, you know, whatever, whatever, if, if you're down for this, um, which I don't care, I'm just letting you guys know, is you can go get like a lot of like Chinese knockoffs now on the market um, from Amazon. I mean, there's a lot of them now that are like, act, like that, are, that, are, that are actual uh, long throw machines, but at like this price range, like this one here is I think like 320, I think, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around that range. Um, and the knockoff ones will, will be around like 100, 130, 150 for this style of machine. Uh, but just add, you know, that's up to you. But again, there's plenty of options, but you don't need to go overboard with price. Like you don't need to be like, oh, I need to go get a $500 or $400 Roops uh, 21 because that's just overkill. Start off with super simple, like an eight millimeter uh, orbital throw. Uh, this is very entry level, very good for you to get started. Um, Biggest point is it's not going to break the bank and you don't want to go you, if you're go, getting into football and some box You don't need to go out and get the most expensive gear Buy something that's affordable try it out dabble in it get a few runs in it And then you're like, okay, you know what? I want to take this a bit more serious upgrade then but starters Something like this or in the realm of this as I mentioned now next is having a three inch polisher does help out a lot Depending on the type of vehicle that you have on the bumper on the rear uh, rear bumper front bumper on the pillars and such but if this is again just entry level things and this is your vehicle and you're just getting into it i would not recommend this was like 150 so it's not you know it's not that expensive it, it helps out a lot but just because once you get this you'll need to get the pads which is going to cost you more and if, if price is a thing because again you just want to get into it i'll say just stick with a gg6 i have the five inch backing plate i'm a i'm a fan of the five inch to get five and a half inch pads so I would still stay stick with this because once you get to the pillars, to the tight areas, just take the pad off and work it by hand or just put it, put your polish or compound in a towel and work it by hand. 
just because again it's you're just getting started it's entry level you want to test the waters out spending an extra 150 for things that you might or might not need or not even use it Eh, you know if you have the money sure go for it if you don't uh, i would say just stick with one machine for now get the this is it's called a gg6 because it comes with a six inch backing plate but you can just buy a five inch backing plate forgot where this is from i'll link it down below and put a five and a half inch uh, pad on there so now let's talk about the pads you need so uh, like i mentioned if you get so if you have a five inch backing plate you'll want to get a five and a half inch pads because you want you don't you don't, you want that little uh edge to be um you want the pad to be a little bit over the pad the backing plate that way you're not uh have the you know you lessen the chance of hitting the paint with the backing plate so you have this little extra half inch that goes over the backing plate um so yeah so you so, so if you get a six six inch if you have a six inch backing plate you want a six and a half inch pad uh so in terms of pad selection and what you want to do uh like i said don't get too crazy with the exact one i'm using there's plenty of options out there if you've seen ones if you've kind of eyed your ones towards other brands that's perfectly fine so um so this is just some of the pads that i have here so this here it now i'm just gonna go over what i have and then i'm literally gonna tell you what you don't need which is mostly everything uh so this is just a little um infrared uh, th thermometer to measure the paint when it's hot outside seeing how hot the paint is uh then your various lights and such this is from astro i think it's like 50 bucks or i don't know check the description box down below forgot where i got i think it's a friend i think this one i hardly use it but um yeah i have that and i have the grids garage polishes uh pads and i have i have plenty of other um polishers uh polishes and compounds i just carry these two tiny ones in here because i could it saves space in my van uh so you're gonna need so when you when if you're just getting started i don't want you to go overboard and say okay i know there's a two-step process and i need a cut and i'll need a polish and then i'll need to lay down my wax uh because so a two-step correction is going to be cutting right removing a majority of the swirls and scratches with a cutting disc and a compound so just for an example there's so many products there i have i have like three four other compounds this is just for an example this is an Oberk cut microfiber cutting pad, which is to remove the majority or the heavy and deep swirls and scratches. And this is a compound from Oberk, which is there's some Supreme Cut, which is used to cut heavy imperfections as well. So if you're if you if if you want to get rid of 80% of the swirls and scratches, this is what you do. You use a cutting pad and a compound fusing together or using together, and you're going to cut a major remove a lot of the imperfections from your paint, water spots uh maybe some red some uh, random isolated deep scratches uh swirls and scratches so on and so forth uh your next step out of a two-step process is you'll need to polish the paint you need to refine the first step so here is when you use a polish with a polishing pad every uh a lot of the companies use different coloring methods uh to identify their pads so a yellow here uh, is, is polishing from Oberk. a yellow somewhere else might be cutting i don't know but it's not a universal thing so like the yellow here are, are polishings, the orange from Griots are also polishing. So, you know, there's, it's gonna vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, brand to brand. Um, so with a second step, with your second step in a two-step paint correction is you'll need to polish it out. Then in the final step is you need to apply your wax or sealant with a, poly, with a, uh, a, pol a finishing pad. So the, comp, the cutting disc here, this one specifically is a cutting pad, cutting disc actually. Um, it's very aggressive. It's meant to remove a heavy amounts of, of imperfections in the paint. Your polishing pad is not as aggressive as this. It's, uh, it's, it still has cutting ability, but it's to refine these. So that's why it's a two-step correction. Then your third one shouldn't really have any cutting ability or very, 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 very minimal ability because you no longer need to cut or polish anything out. You literally just need a pad to actually lay the wax or sealant on the paintwork. So when you're just getting started what i recommend is you start off with just a one step polish so instead of doing the heavy imperfections using the the the, the cutting disc and the uh, compound i would say just start off with a polishing pad and a pol and a and a polish the reason being is it you're you probably don't have much experience identifying what's going to be what and how long it's going to take you so Instead of purchasing six cutting discs and the compounds, you know, four or five uh, polishing pads and the polish, 
and doing all that like spin again I, in my mind i'm assuming you don't want to spend all that much money because you're just getting into it so i would recommend you start off with just a polishing pad and a polish and also depending on your paint sometimes this in itself can re remove 80 percent of the swirls and scratches depending on the type of paint that you have and the condition that it's in so uh for starters i would say is that there that you might have a vehicle that you do this and it does almost nothing because the clear coat is so um hard which you like you'll need to do a two-step but you might be able to get a you might have a condition a vehicle that will remove 60 to 70 percent of the swords and scratches with this setup so for starters i say use a polish and a polishing pad all these will be linked down below and for it depends on the size of the vehicle and such but i'd say a good starting point would be just to get four pads well, one, one. Uh, four, polish, four polishing pads <clears throat> to get through your entire vehicle. Now, four may not seem like a lot. If you've seen other videos or like Instagram accounts and such, you'll know that four doesn't sound like that much. But for you, and even for me, like I don't have that many pads. This, this is, oh, actually I have, a lot, I have a lot more over there. But this is what I carry with me for the most part. Um, Cause I have three inch and such and I have, actually I have a bunch more over there. Um, with this one you should you can do your entire vehicle like this because you might do maybe let's say let's just keep it simple one pad per panel so one pad for one door panel switch on over to the next pad for the for one door panel do this for the hood and the two front fenders do this for the roof now uh what's what you want to do which is just good working ethics or guidelines or rules whatever you want to say is that you're just going to wash them out as you're going so once these four get completely dirty uh, and like they're caked on with compound and just residue and such well you'll just get your apc spray it rub it with your hand rinse it out with water really good repeat that process until it's all out and then put it on your polisher make sure it's on the right put it like on speed four or five turn it on let it all uh spin all the all the uh water out and residue you stop it, you kind of blot it a little bit with a towel and it's back to 100% clean and good to go because by turning it on, it's gonna throw out 90% of that water or 95% of that water. So you'll just clean it as you go. And again, you're not in a rush. You're not, you know, you don't have, it's not for a client. So four pads, I mean, yeah, four pads, three pads, three to four pads. And if you have a bigger truck, let's say four to five, but um, yeah, just clean it as you go. It's, it's APC, rub it out rinse it squeeze it out inspect it if, it if there's still some compound or polish residue spray it massage it rinse it squeeze it out and then once it's good turn it on let it throw all that water out and residue blot it with a towel and then it's back it's, it's good to use uh back on the paint again so that's why you don't have to spend that many that much you don't have to spend that much money on that many pads because just just clean them um so if you if you do want to do a two-step correction i mean yeah just just buy i would say four to six discs because they might since you're using these to cut a lot more it's going to get kicked on way more so i'd say four to six of these cutting discs and again you'll do the same thing in terms of to clean them out same process as that um and i i would recommend the griots or the oberk line for your um for polishing so i'll, I'll have all these linked down below both work great I, you know if I only have this to work with, I'm going to make it happen. If I only have the grits garage, I'm going to make it happen. So don't get too caught up in like, well, what's the, the specific one you absolutely need? I, dude, just you give me something, I'm going to make it work. That's the mindset you need. You starting off, you're going to suck either way because you're just starting. So whatever you use, you're going to suck. It's going to be that experience process, learning curve, um, and refining for you to really understand how to do it. Lastly, is you'll need a finishing pad here. Uh, this Again, this is from Oberk, but uh, Griot's Garage also has their own line and their own pads. Um, it's just a finishing pad, a wax, a wax pad, whatever you want to call it, still five and a half inch um, pad. So this is actually a, a pad cleaner. Um, what you would do is you would uh, spray your, your, your APC on here to clean it and then turn on the machine and let it run over that. That's not really necessary. I hardly ever use it. I just massage it out with my hands. In terms of light, this one is the Astro Lights. It's uh, magnetic, so it sticks to a car or metal, whatever if that matters to you at all. Uh, it has a little hook here. Uh, this one, again, I'll link it down below. It's kind of, exp 
expensive if you're just getting into it um you can use like even a cheaper light that you can find like if you have one laying around um but this one is you know well the i forget the other brand but like the, the even better one like different brand is like a few hundred bucks i think so this one's not expensive compared to the other one it still does a great job um so i have a few options down below uh because you can have handheld lights and then you can have uh like tripod lights that are actually standing and and and, and sh um shining the paint shining at the paint while you work i'll have those linked down below um uh, which the stands are actually very 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 affordable which i highly recommend you get and then if you can purchase a light of some sort for you but again i'm not trying to go too crazy with the tools and products um that you need. I have also the apron. I don't really recommend you need an apron for your first one, but for me it does help because I'm doing it as a business and uh, I need to upgrade to like a belt or something, but I do have an apron, but that's not, that's not a big deal. So now let's talk about towels because I have quite a few towels. I have like three, four boxes just with different assortment of towels from different companies, different um, GSM, different types. So plenty of towels. I, I used to look so, I used to try to learn so much about towels and such. I have, long forgotten a lot about towels and such just because it's kind of pointless to be honest um so these towels are all high quality they're a decent price range because they are made for quality for polishing paint you don't want to use a raggedy daggedy uh towel that's been like heavily used the fibers all chopped up and such because um an important part of polishing paint is using a proper towel to not make like it would suck is as you're removing the polish from your paint your towel is instilling more sores and scratches because it's poor quality like this one i would never use for the paint work because like it's so old it's been washed so many times the fibers are all ugly and such whereas these are nice and fluffy and soft and like they're washed properly and contained somewhere differently these i would just you know they'll go through so many very like things and services and like they're just like workhorses these not so much they're for the paint work so I'll have a few of options down below. Just be honestly, I don't remember where all these towels are coming from because it's just not information I need to retain in my in my noggin uh, for any reason other than whatever. So, um, <clears throat> so the imp important part is you need decent quality towels. Now, I will say though that even if you are like, so I would also recommend that if you want, which I've done it before, is like these are the towels you get at costco they're kirkland towels i think they come in like a pack of 36 for like 12 bucks or something or like 15 bucks go there locally and you can use you should be able to use those because i think the quality kind of changed a bit but you could spend like 15 bucks to buy like a pack of 36 or whatever and using those on the first time will get you great results at least in my experience because these i think for like i think for these towels I'm gonna put a screenshot, but I think it's for like a pack of four or five. It's like 20 bucks or something. Let's see how off I was with that screenshot. But with these, you can get a lot more, 36 or something, or 32 for like 15, 12 bucks or something. So you can also do that where you just, you use those towels for the first time on your paintwork. So you know that they're clean and, 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 and just in good condition. Um, but I'll, I'll link these down below. For starters, I mean, you know, you have, you technically, you know, you have one towel, but you have, you know, eight sides because once you fold it, you have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, of course. Um, so with, with this one, depending on the vehicle that you're working on and such, uh, you know, I would put between, let's say, six to 12, just starting off. Like, you can go overboard with this. Like, you can use one towel per panel and such. But again, I'm being very redundant here and very, just like a broken record. I'm assuming you don't want to spend that much money. I don't want you to have this full thing like you don't need to do that just starting off very simple will help you get into the world of polishing paint so uh next is you will want some tape um it, it does help to for starters like for you to to not damage any trim or anything is to uh buy up uh some some tape you will want this type like this type of paint this type of tape uh, i don't know exactly what it's called here these are the the scott the three scotch um, but it's, it's really light. You don't want like like you don't want to use like heavy duty tape because I mean that's sticking to the paint. It's already bad in itself. So something light like this, uh, just one roll would be good. Just just for you starting off, like you can tape off the trim and areas that you may want to protect more because you're just not that experienced with a polisher. Um, you don't want to bang into anything. So protecting trim or, or other sensitive areas like emblems or 
or edges will be helpful. So you want a roll of tape, which that's, you know, cheap, you know, you, you can just go and get that. The other thing you may want to invest in is maybe just a knee pad. I, I got this from uh, Jay Leno's garage, but I mean, I can guarantee you, you can find a, 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 a knee pad anywhere. I mean, it, use a cardboard or something to play. So that way your knees aren't getting banged up while you're bent over. You can get like a, a stool or some sort. Like um, if you're working like in your garage, I have this here um, mechanic uh, uh, workbench thingamabobber. Uh, not a workbench, um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the old thing that I let everyone use. So that's why it's there. And you can tell that it stays outside. And I actually do use it quite a bit when I'm here in the garage. Uh, so you can use something like that to sit down instead of like having to just be kneeled over the entire time because that does actually help a lot to have that and not have to be bent over and like fatigue, like, you know, bending over for your knees or for your back and such so that does help or if you because i think that's like a hundred bucks or so so if you don't want to use that you can use your bucket now if you have the right type of bucket or just a bucket that's whatever is you can go and purchase a this one's from uh, adam's polishes this bucket here uh, and go get a gamma seal lid thing and you can put your butt here and sit on here uh while you detail instead of bending, again instead of bending over uh which i do this all the time as well um, and if you really want, you can use your knee pad to give you a bit more cushion. And now you are living the luxury life. And that's going to wrap up this video. Like I said, it's not that many things that I want you to get when you're first starting off because you just want to dabble and test the waters with the paint correction, paint polishing, because it's very easy to just spend hundreds of dollars on things. And if you get into that mindset of like, you see those photos or detailers on YouTube or Facebook groups where they post all their tools and products. And there's like this huge, like stacks of pads and towels and like these big bottles of compounds and polishes. Like you get that mentality of like, oh, that's what you need. But for starters, just kind of testing the waters a little bit. I don't want you to spend that much and not, only not spend that much but you you don't want to assume everything you think i say this almost every single time i make a tool and product video is that you don't want to assume what you think you're going to need and then once you actually purchase it and you get it and you're like i have it and you're like wow i didn't really need it so now it just collects dust and like you just wasted the money there so it also helps you see like okay i'm using this five inch it's hard to do this pillar or this mirror or whatever so like yeah it would help if i had the three inch and now i know exactly where to put the three inch instead of buying a three inch and a one inch that's pneumatic and then you're just like okay i have these like i need to use them where i put them so that's why i also say start off with very basic things um because it'll help you gain that experience of not having something so when you do get it you're much more experienced and are wiser of where to put that tool to use so hopefully it helped again all those links will be down below because i don't even know the names of most of these things um but I, you know whatever so check the description box down below let me know if you have any comments questions concerns i'll do more paint correction genre videos because again like i could have kept on going into different rabbit holes of like this is how much you know of, of, of how, how to do it and and the amount you need and yada 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 but this was just tools and products let me know uh, your thoughts down below and I'll see you on the next one.